all right guys here's another installment of fixing broken shit um this is a hay squeeze you guys that have been watching the channel long enough know that i work on a lot of these um this one here obviously has carriage bearings out on it mm, yeah i don't know i just really can see the bottom one here how about this one up here i don't really can't tell on that one but anyway they got to be changed um i've got uh what we got to do here is we're gonna let it down pull the the clamp off uh, i don't really call these forks it's not a forklift this squeezes blocks of hay and picks the block of hay up it's a clamp so we got to pull these big bolts out here pull the pins on the on the uh these cylinders here i'll show you well let's go ahead and let it down and i'll show you um oh everything's hitting me at one time here i got a detroit that needs a one box on it and then kevin's truck lost the freaking air compressor and it's rattling uh there's my dog i'm gonna let the clamp down on her and kill her needs to be anyway to get the clamp clamps off there anyway um i got new bushings here i've already turned these once uh but see the big gap here i got new bushings here for that when we have this thing apart we'll replace those but we'll have to pull these these clamp arms you know will come in and out with these cylinders right here and then there's a the side shift cylinder right there i just replaced that side shift cylinder last summer it, it had cracked around here and it kept cracking we kept welding it just kept cracking so we put another one on there anyways we got to pull these pins pull these cylinders pull the clamp arms off then i'll take my crane and i'll have to basically let it what i'll do is i'll let it i'll get some blocks after i get the clamp arms off and then i'll let the carriage back down on the blocks and slack the chains and then we'll pull the chains off We'll just pull the pins out right here and then pull the chains off. All right, so on these clamp arms, I the first thing I try to do is I try to get them apart out here, but most of the time they won't come out. The bottom's loose, but the top is froze up. I'm going to put it back in place, put the pins back in at the bolts. And what I do is, I didn't even try on this side, is I take the pin out of the cylinder that pushes this out, and these guide tubes have no stops on them. And I just got it, I suck this cylinder in and then I, I put that in there and I put it up right against this and I just shove it out. And you can see both of these are out of there. I'm gonna get my crane out and grab it and just kind of lay it over there. Uh, just way, way easier than sitting there dicking around and beating on this thing all day long. So uh, I gotta get this side back in and I'll show you, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I gotta, let's get this side back together and get the pins in it. will go back together I thought it's gonna come apart and I realized yeah it ain't gonna come apart <laughs> it's gonna be a pain in the ass this side here this bottom one's moving real easy just a little bit so I think we just tap this bolt hopefully hopefully there's threads left on by the time it goes through there all right it's fine now ah, this one here 
doesn't want to cooperate. I got to get it back to where it's supposed to be. <sighs> Let me figure out how I'm going to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to beat on this if I can help it. Maybe my rubber mallet, maybe. I doubt that'll do it. But... I doubt it. Oh, it's doing it. Yes, it's coming back in there. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll... Hi, baby. What you doing, crazy girl? What you doing? No, uh -huh. we'll get this one back in place. Just got a little further to go. Put the pin back in it, and we'll take this tubing, and I'll show you that whole method of madness there. So I left it out. I'm gonna grab it with the crane. I'm just gonna have all that weight. I don't know if that's enough weight on those to. I don't know if those are heavy enough to make her. I don't remember. Uh, well, let's just suck it back in and see what happens. Huh? Ain't gonna hurt nothing. just ought to not just leave it alone maybe i'll push that other one out just a little bit further and i'll just stick some blocks under here the less you know the least we got to move these things the better off we are man i am suffering on jac caps i i got plenty of plugs i've got so many jobs going that i've got shit capped off i'm pretty much using all my damn i can't put any caps over the cylinders which i don't like doing that but I really don't got much of a choice. I don't even have any plastic ones. I'm like, shit. I gotta replenish my cap supply there. Alright. I had another plug in my pocket. Josie Wells. One more hose on the side shift cylinder. What are you growly growly at, huh? He says, I'm gonna kill that bastard, whatever it is over there, I'm gonna kill it. That's what it deserves, is a good killing. Oh, that's a GIC union. That ain't gonna work. Get a plug. And one thing good about it: most of the hose, most of the oil is leaking out of the hose. It's not the cylinder. So, okay, on these road runners, this whole thing, as you can see here, let's get this hose here back and that one back. This whole thing just pivots on this right here. Take this, take these U bolts out, which we're changing these bushings anyway. 
and we'll grab this thing with a crane there and we'll just let the whole thing down and the whole carriage is way easier to manage and you can get in here to these chains easier and all that good shit so now i'm going to let it down and uh get these loose go ahead and grab it with the crane first strap here and a strap there and then we'll loosen these u-bolts off pull that off and then this will be naked to where we can get in there well you know i had it on the ground and i thought you know why do that i'm just get it up here get a hold of it with the crane get it up here where i can get the impact wrench on it let's we'll see if this milwaukee three quarters got enough companies there to break them loose Typical Milwaukee battery bullshit. Things get really annoying after a while. Not ready to just go get my air gun and see the hell with this piece of shit. Carefully choose where I step, <clears throat> or I won't wind up in a big pile of shit on the ground. And I don't like doing that shit as I get older, it hurts a whole lot. More. step out here. Okay. I don't like jumping down on shit. <laughs> hey.
guys for now. our carriage all right so we finally got our head and our ass wired together blow, blow this hay chaff out of here I guess I'll get the blower and I was gonna blow that shit out of there I'll pull all them hoses off I don't know we'll see I guess they just kind of line up with where they go I mean it really ain't They kind of go from left to right up on the pulley order and same thing here so I don't think a guy can screw it up too bad. Okay so here we go. What I got is I got it lowered on the ground. Now we, the mast cylinders will push the mast up off the carriage. Okay, let's see how many failed bearings there are. Did Jeff give me these? I don't know if he gave me those. those. That one's seized up there. Okay, this one here is definitely shit. Okay, well. Let's see what he gave me for parts. I hope he gave me them little small ones there, but I don't know if he did or not. I kinda told him I wanted pretty much everything. Hang on there in the front. God. Come over, Josie. Come on, girly. Hey, what do we got? What are you doing, babe? Let's see what we got for parts, huh? Okay, here we go. Got those. There's four, maybe eight of these. He didn't give me the little ones, damn it. Damn it, Jeff. 
There's the main mast bearings. Dad, gummit, I hate doing all this work and not changing these two bearings right here. Well, there's grease search in it, but you know them guys aren't greasing nothing. I guess they're all right. Let's grease them. See how they feel greased. Those monkeys that ever grease something. It's like this morning, you know, I, I didn't get down here till later, till about nine o'clock, cause it's, I have my truck in my shop at the house. I got that Duramax out of there and I thought, man, I want to grease my truck and service my truck. I greased it all up real good and drained the water out of the air tanks and changed the oil and changed the fuel filter. It's called maintenance. It's just a novel concept. You know, I, I think it should be required that most of these people should go out and, and be in business for themselves and have to spend their own money on shit and then they'll maybe start taking care of shit. You know, because a lot of these outfits, the way they operate, if I ever was doing that as a self-employed mechanic the way I do, yeah, my service truck gets dirty and greasy, but you know, I don't run around with shit not, you know, if there's anything on that truck that is going to prohibit me maintenance wise from making a living every day, it's going to get fixed. You know, I don't, I, you know, just simple shit like grease and I'm kind of meticulous about that. Grease is always cheaper than iron. Snap rings are bars, really. Motherfucker. Uh, where is my hammer? Oh, it's right here. Say, are they that damn tight on there? I'm gonna have to get a puller on these things. Or oh, the air hammer take them off. Posy lock puller I put on there too. But... Let's see here. Is that where I can put the camera at? Obviously, the rounded off edge goes. Is there any shims? I guess that boss is kind of the way it's made, I guess. I think what I can do is grab my handy dandy air hammer and just kind of shove her on in there. thing's got all these shims. Let's shim the snap ring out. Mm. 
No worries, huh? We'll kick her right in the teeth. Teach us to dick around with us. There's quite a few shims in that thing, you know. There's a shim. They had them shimmed out pretty tight. Probably should clean the shit off of them so they'll don't get in there and I can't get the snap ring in it, you know. It's looking like that's something we want to do right there. I got some new snap rings too. This thing's kind of tweaked a little bit. Give me new snap rings too. So we'll put a new snap ring on there. Those feel good now with some grease in there. But like I said, getting guys to grease shit, it's almost like what the guy told me one time, he says, yeah, them grease guns and almost like shovels. They tickle the hands too much, they can't hold on to them, you know? They just don't, they don't want nothing to do with them. I guess we'll have to see how tight we can get that in there. Weaken on me, I'll try to spread it. Yeah. Let me go see if I can find a pair of street snap ring pliers. Okay, so we're. Got the first bearing on. Yeah, this one here was about ready to go to. See how rough it is. Probably original equipment. The manufacturer. Clean every bit of grease off these that I can so that does not affect my clearance. I'm not going to have any problems out of you, am I? that thing up with the crane and set it on the jack stands to do the bottom ones so I ain't bending over all the time go do the other top two on the other side I still gotta do the mast I still gotta pull the hoses clear off the top and then uh, well I don't have much of a choice I gotta pull the mast clear off the top in there I think has to, uh, I don't know
Yeah, it's in the snap ring groove around it. There ain't no way that's coming off of there, I don't believe. This one here, this one here, doesn't look like it's all the way in. Yeah, that's one ear on that snap ring. You know. Yes, the washers are tweaked a little bit on it. I think it'll peel off of there. I wonder if it's going I don't like it. Don't like it. it ain't right. The son of a bitch coming off on me. I ain't reusing that snap ring. I'm gonna use one of the old ones. Washer's kind of got a little bit of a tweak in it or something here. What's going on with that? I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get that last washer in here. Just looking at that right there, I don't think that's going to happen. Must be a minute difference because I'm all the way in. I'm up against the shoulder. Must be a minute. I mean, it's just a little bitty shim. But... Towards the outside, just in case I fix any kind of clearance. I know that one. Seated up and went all the way in. Okay, and there's no. Man, I wonder if I should put that one in there because I can move those washers. Yeah, I better. I gotta see if I can get it in there. It's going to be tight trying to get that in there. I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, then it just goes right together. Okay. It's amazing how things work sometimes. That <laughs> just. <laughs> I don't know. It just went right together. <clears throat> and I can move them, but that's the shims that were... There's no way you're going to get another one in there. There's no way in hell. So I'm going to do the other two on the other side. Like I said, this one's seized in there. That one don't feel too bad. That one don't feel too bad. That one's rough. That one's really rough. 
This one obviously is totally shit. All right guys, so we got all the carriage bearings done. They're all on there brand new. So on the mast, on these Roadrunners, hay squeezes, they're pretty easy. Up there on the top, you'll see the ears. Well, on the main frame of the mast, you got one big bolt holding each cylinder and that's actually what creates the down pressure so that can lift up you know that's what it sets on and then it just got an eye here that the fitting sits and i got uh, some flat faced o-ring caps and i just let the i just lift I, I block up the mass i lift it up and i block it up with these stands i set them right inside the channel and i and i block them up and then i get the weight off of it and they sit on them on them uh stands and then i get the bolts out up there pull your lines off and then i uh take my uh Right, wrap a choker around the strap and I just let them down right in here and they sit right on this cross member They can't really go anywhere because they'll hit that other cross member up there, too. They can't go nowhere <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, and then You can lower it down. See the mass is just kind of sitting there <sighs> And then you can pull your your uh, Your rollers out on the bottom and the one out on the top now you can get to those so, uh, and there's the top ones up there. Pretty easy, huh? The old two jaw probably like wouldn't pull it off. I got the three jaw on here and it's coming hard. And this is where a guy probably wants to wear some safety goggles. That way a piece of that bearing shears off it don't wind up in your eyeball. Wow, that did not come easy. I would say that that shaft needs to be cleaned up really, really good before we go back together. I would say, holy cow, that did not come easy. All right, let me get some emery cloth, clean that up really good because I don't want. Maybe we'll take some anti-seize and put on there, huh? Do I have any emery cloth? Yes, I do. Hang on a second here. I'm losing my damn daylight. I'm not going to get this done today. Which I really wanted to. I've got so much shit to do that I don't ever tell these guys no. These guys are really, really good for me. I mean, they constantly use me. It's, you know, it's one of my local guys. I just can't. Whenever they say jump, I ask them how high, because they pay their bills, and, and these guys go just about as hard as I do, so, hang on, I can't see because of the safety goggles, got shit on them, hell, I got the wrong side of the emery cloth on there, that ain't going to work very well, is it? I want that shinier than a diamond and a goat's ass, boy. Suspended load. God, I'm so. I'm glad I have common sense and root for myself. I can just see somebody saying something stupid like that. It's hanging on the crane, but it's all I can do. As long as I don't stick my finger right underneath there, I'll be fine. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I just get a kick out of the lack of common sense with. You know, and that's the reason there's so many stupid frickin' rules is because of all the dummies that killed themselves, you know. There's things that happen that are just, you know, you're, that are beyond your control. Uh, but a lot of the stuff like that, it's just, yeah, it, it ain't going anywhere. It's like that Challenger out there, I got jacked up out in the mud. I mean, the worst thing in the world that could happen to that thing is it might fall down in the soft ground. <laughs> it never hurt nothing. 
And you got some little safety Sally, little sissy son of a bitch out there that he's got to tell you everybody. He's got to give his two cents, you know. Spend 10 hours figuring out how to be safe about it on a 30 minute project, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If we ever got into another world war, world war in this country, we would get our asses kicked. You better hope that we don't get another war. Because, I mean, we've got the biggest pussies on the planet anymore in this country. Just a bunch of pussies. We'd be over there having safety meetings while they were bombing us, you know, how to be safe about being bombed. <laughs> be really careful. This is another thing that I might do wrong. Piss off all the bearing experts. Mm. until I get damn near gets dark. feeling the top ones will probably come out a lot better these low ones are gonna get all the moisture these are, they're gonna be the tough ones to do and them snap rings Jeff give me will not work on these these are different these are definitely different so we gotta reuse the old ones Like a glove. Ooh, yeah. Like a glove. I'm just take a chisel and make sure the bearing or the snap ring is seated up in the groove where it needs to be. appears that it is. Bottom, just this one ear is a little bit off here. I don't know if I can go. Sometimes, what you can do is go like that and get it to a different spot. Okay, that goes. Double check the work, and make sure the shit ain't gonna come apart on us. All right. 
Okay, so I gotta do the other one over there. Then I can do the easier ones, I hope, the top ones. Shit land over them, so in a hurry, I'm trying to beat some, beat the daylight, you know. Let's throw these hoses up here. Feeling this one's gonna do the same thing. This ladder over here out of my way. Yeah, I'm certain it's probably going to do the same thing. Luck pull and do the same thing. Well, guys, uh, I got all the bearings except the one on the top that side. I had to cut this one out. I could not, it bent my big three jaw puller, bent the stud on it. Um, so it kind of pissed me off, and I just got the torch out and cut the bastard off. Anyways, I gotta I gotta run up there to, to town. My buddy Keith's got a belt trailer and he's got a load of apples on, and he's afraid he's gonna load this. You know, he's got to get this thing unloaded, and and uh, so he doesn't have to eat this load of apples. But uh, no, it's it, it the, the truck needs a one box. They've had the the truck down south three or four different times when he's down there in Bakersfield. Every time it breaks down when he's down there. And, and those Knox conversion codes. And, and I told Keith, I said, well, you know, he's told me all the stuff they did. They did the, they did the doser flow test and they did the, the Knox, um, or not the Knox, but the, uh, the deaf quality test. They did all that stuff. They did the regens and every, every two or three days it's derated again and it's throwing Knox conversion codes. And I said, dude, it needs a one box. I mean, there really isn't much else to it. I mean, if there's no exhaust leaks or anything like that before it gets there, it needs a one box in it. So he said, well, they're telling me I need this awning kit. And I said, that awning kit is a joke. It doesn't do shit. It's a waste of money and a waste of time. I said, you're going to have to spend the money and buy a one box or delete the piece of shit. So uh, he says, I ain't deleting it. I run in California too much. He's from Oregon, but he's he's always down in Bakersfield and stuff. And I mean, they're just a bunch of, I don't know, I don't want to get into it, but anyways, uh, so I got to run up there. What, I, what I'm what i going to do is try to get, I'm going to have to do an SCR, I think it's efficiency test or something I have to do with my, uh, with my through Detroit software and try to get it to, I got to try to get it out of D rate and then do the force regen and then get the codes to clear so he can at least go get the thing unloaded while we're waiting on the parts to show up, so... I'll come back tomorrow, and uh, I just got that one bearing to change. And uh, shit, man, all I got to do is grab this with the crane, lift it back up, block it back up with the jack stands, grab each cylinder one at a time, and throw those in place, and bolt them down, put the lines back on it, and then uh, I can set this back i can lift this back up and set it on the cylinders where it goes and then uh, uh put the carriage in it you know basically use the, the machine lift up the the mast and then crane the carriage over here and set it on the ground and just lower the mast up to on top of it and then hook everything up and then of course put the arms on and you're done so anyways sounds easy all right well upwards and onwards